Hello, welcome to this third video on the cross product. In the first video, we looked at how to calculate it. In the second video, we looked at its properties. In this video, we look at an application of it where there is a three dimensional object determined by three vectors. And it creates a, I like to call the shape a prism of parallelograms, a parallelogram prism. But uh, most places you'll see it called a parallelopiped. All right, let's take a look at it. So three vectors, A, B, and C. They, they form this three-dimensional shape where you have a prism of parallelograms. The volume of the shape is going to be calculated using dot and cross together, um, and we'll have a shortcut to calculating that. Uh, when you have a prism, the volume of the shape then is found by finding the area of the base and multiplying by the height. The base for us is a parallelogram. In the previous video, one of the geometric properties of the cross product we found uh, was that the magnitude of the cross product between two vectors is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by those two vectors. So the magnitude of B cross C is going to be equal to the area of our base. Now we have to figure out what the height is because it's not a right prism. What we have to do is project. The vector A determines the height. The projection of A onto the cross product between B and C. You have these two vectors, B and C. You cross them, you get a third vector who, who is orthogonal to both of them. That will be the used to give you the height. That vector itself won't give you the height. You got to use the vector A and project onto that vector. Okay. And the magnitude of that projection vector is called the component. Um, in case it's negative, we put these absolute value bars around it. The component of A along B cross C in absolute value bar, that is going to be the height of your shape. Now remember, um, back when we did the dot product series, we learned how to project a vector onto another vector. And we learned that in order to do the um, projection, we can find out how long that projection vector is by doing the dot product between them. That's the numerator. And then a denominator will be the product of their magnitudes. I mean, sorry, I'm sorry. The, the denominator is the magnitude of the vector that you're projecting onto. So A dot B cross C, B cross C is the vector that you're projecting onto that gets divided by the magnitude of B cross C. That'll give you the length of the projection vector, which for us is the height of our rectangular prism, um, parallelogram prism. And so uh, take these two um, calculations and put them together to get the volume. We multiply the area of the base times the height. So the area of the base times the height, put these two guys together and we get some nice cancellation. And what comes out is a dot product which has the potential to be negative. And so those bars around it are absolute value bars. Okay, officially the name is a parallelopiped, but I, I like to call it a parallelogram prism. So you could actually do the calculation with finding the cross product and then dotting with the third vector. Um, it turns out that the order doesn't matter because you can use the bottom as your base or the front as your base or the left side as your base. And so the order in which you do the three um, won't matter. Um, you could also do this without even performing a cross product and a dot product. Okay, a convenient way to calculate this volume is by taking your three vectors and simply just making them the rows in a three by three matrix and finding the determinant of that matrix. Using whatever technique you like. The name of this dot with a cross is called the scalar triple product. Okay, if we go back to the shape, um, 
the a will determine the, the, the height of it. Now, if it happens to be that all three vectors are in the same plane, then the prism doesn't have any height to it. It's given us a volume of zero. And so this calculation, a dot b cross c, is going to be zero only when the three vectors are in the same plane. If they are coplanar, then you'll end up with a zero for this volume. All right, let's do a quick calculation. Uh, here are three vectors. Let's calculate the volume of the parallel pipe head determined by these three vectors. Make each guy a row. I like cofactor expansion, especially when there are zeros in the mix. We take two times the two by two determinant, one, one, two, two. We don't care about the middle term because it's a zero. And we take one times the two by two determinant, one, one, zero, two. By crossing out the row and column of that entry, we get the two by two determinant that we have to find. But what happens with the first one is that determinant is zero. So the determinant is zero. We, we have a zero multiplier for the second guy. We really only have the third, and that determinant is a two, and it's times the one entry. So this volume is two. If you prefer the, the alternative shortcut way to calculate a three by three determinant, you can do that by copying down column one and column two and doing forward facing diagonal products and subtracting backward facing diagonal products. You'll get the same value, of course, as long as you're careful. With that one, you have to be neat. You have to line things up nicely. You have to erase when you, if you put in um, some dash marks, but that, that method works as well. And so um, we uh, have a picture. Uh, there's a nice website where you can throw in the uh, three vectors and the, the, um, the website uses uh, the person that... Um, that made the website uses GeoGebra to be able to uh, output the actual three-dimensional drawing. All right, um, let's go ahead and end the video here. It's a nice. Um, I wanted to add another application, but we can wait for the next video. And so, um, thank you for watching. If you want to calculate the volume of a parallelogram prism or a parallel pipe head, you now know all about it, and now you can do it. Uh, it's an application of the cross product, the end dot product. And uh, thank you for watching this video. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I am helping you through this journey of multivariable calculus. And we have a couple more cross product videos, maybe just one more, one more cross product video. And that'll be it for our series there. And then we'll move on to the next topic. So um, comment down below if you have any questions or concerns, uh, reach out to me, um, like, and, like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.